Right, welcome to the video. Uh, in this one, we're going to talk about the new Z1 Designer version 2022.1. Uh, as you know, the Z1 Designer is the tool used to create your own dashboards for use with the Z1 dashboard. And as of version 2022.1, there are many new features. A lot of these make it much easier to use the designer, uh, and some of them are for new tools, and other are just new options or tweaks within existing tools. So you can jump ahead to points within the video. They'll be all listed in the chapter index, or you can watch the whole thing to get uh, all the information about what's new in version 2022.1. So let's get to it. So let's start with the new open dialog. Uh, so we've got the designer here uh, with nothing open, and we're going to go to file and then open dashboard. So this is the new open uh, dashboard dialog. It's really similar to the gallery. This makes it much easier to find what you're looking for. You get a preview of the, uh, the dash uh, and then some basic information about it. So this is showing me all the dashboards that I have currently saved on my machine, uh, as opposed to the, the gallery, which shows you all the dashboards that you can download. So uh, I'm going to open a specific one here, which is this uh, Mercedes uh, F1 dashboard. So just to open it, I can double click it. If I want to delete one of these, as it says here, I can control click to delete it, and then you'll get a confirmation of do you want to delete the dashboard or not. Um, so I'm going to double click to open it. And then here I am with the new dashboard that I want to work with open in the designer. So another new thing that the designer has is, con is a conditional text tool. So this is similar to the conditional image tool, um, but just works with text. So it's right here on the uh, toolbar, this sort of double uh, T icon. And this dashboard has, uh, it makes use of that uh, in its display. So right here, this object here is a conditional text object. So if you look at the object properties, uh, it says, uh, you know, the basic information. And if you scroll down to the bottom here, this is showing me what is going to get displayed. So this uh, particular item is keying off the MGUK deploy mode, uh, which is used in the Mercedes F1 car. And I have five different things that it can be. So based on the value of that MGUK deploy mode, various texts can be displayed. Um, and I can have this one, the no display. And as you click on it, it updates your preview so you can see what it'll look like. Uh, and then we have attack, balance, and build. And then you have the from values and the to values. So based on what you want, you can choose that. Uh, so this is new as of uh, this version in 2022.1. So let's talk about the LED group tool. This is also new as of 2022.1. Uh, it's right here. So you can click this and then drag out. Uh, and I'm going to move this in the foreground. Uh, so what this does is it makes it easy to create multiple LEDs in a line uh, evenly spaced. Uh, so previously you had to sort of do it one by one. This just simplifies the whole process. So I just drag it out to where I want it to be. I can position it anywhere I want. And then on the right here in the properties, I can choose what the LED should be like. So uh, I can choose the color. And if I want a different color, uh, and I can choose uh, the shape, are they circles or rectangles? And how many do you want? Uh, if you know if you just want a few or if you want a whole load of them. And then uh, the dimensions of the LEDs. So let's say this is uh, too small, we can make them bigger, whatever we want to do. And then when you're done, you click this Create LEDs button. So just click this. And what that does is it turns all of these into individual LEDs. So now they're all individual objects uh, and you can do what you want. When they are created, they're all locked. So you don't accidentally move them around. Uh, but if you want, you can just unlock them. And now I can drag this individual one wherever I want to put it. Same thing here. Do whatever I want with it. Uh, so that's the LED group tool. And the idea is to make it much easier and faster to put a string of LEDs uh, on the, uh, the dashboard. All right, so now we're going to talk about another feature introduced in this version called object pinning. Uh, so the track maps are an excellent um, dashboard to use to demonstrate this. So most objects 
you'll see in the object properties this new area here, pins. So you can pin an object to the left, uh, to the right, or to the bottom. The purpose of pinning something is to make sure it always stays on the left, the right, or the bottom. Because as you adjust the size of the screen, uh, of the dashboard, that if an object is not pinned, it can sort of move around, and you might not want that to happen. So if I pin this track map to the left and to the bottom, then when I move this around, it will always stay centered uh, in this area with its left edge on the left and the bottom on the bottom. So we have this rectangle, and as we, if we pin it on the left and the right, now it will always stay connected, no matter how big my dashboard is, to the left and the right side. Uh, if I unpin it, we want the rectangle. If I unpin it, then when I move it around, you'll see that it stays where I put it, but it doesn't stay connected with the left and right side. So that's another good uh, demonstration of how object pinning can work. Since we have a track map up here, we're going to talk about some of the new features associated with track maps in this version. Uh, the biggest difference is that you now have a style option. So a normal track map is the full thing, uh, and it can either be static or moving based on the user's choices. But you can also now add a flat one. So if we choose flat, then what happens is the, dash, the track map is end up being a horizontal line with the start of the lap on the left and the end of the lap on the right. Uh, so this allows you to make uh, very small track maps showing you exactly where everybody is. And all you have to do is choose style flat on this side uh, instead of normal. There's also a new track map widget that has been added. So this item right here, this is a widget, uh, and you can place it anywhere you want using the widget tool, and it's just a track map settings. So uh, when this is displayed uh, in the uh, designer, you can choose to preview it or not. So this is the button that uh, the user in the dashboard will click to adjust the track map. So they can use it to rotate um, or flip horizontally or vertically um, the track map. If you want this new track map, you put this in. If not, you don't have to have it. Um, but this is what it looks like and how you use it to make the dashboard more user configurable from the person who's using it on the uh, Z1 dashboard end. So while we're on widgets, let's talk about some of the other new widgets that have been added as of uh, version 2022.1. So we've got uh, session state and session type. Uh, so you can add that in just by choosing these. Um, so the session state is what's going on. Are you racing or is it a, um, a, uh, a green flag, is it the checker flag, things like that. And the session type is, is it a race, is it a qualification, is it a practice. So if you want the information displayed, that's where you can get it for your widget. Um, we also have the position after stop right here, uh, which will tell you what will will estimate what position you will be in after you make a pit stop if you did it immediately. Um, we also have the position slash total cars. So previously we just had your position, but now you can also choose uh, your position and then the total number of cars displayed in the same widget. And then we have another lap option. So in addition to having um, the total number of laps and the total number, I'm sorry, the lap count slash the total laps, you can then just slightly different it just says the lap number then of whatever. So it's another style of displaying how many laps uh, there are and how many you've done. Okay, so while we are looking at this dashboard, uh, let's also talk about some of the new data channels that have been added in this version. Uh, a lot of them are actually used in here in various formats, so this is the perfect time to talk about them. There's the ERS lap level percentage and, and ERS level percentage. Uh, we also have the number of DRS uses, uh, so every time you click the button to turn it on, this will be incremented. Uh, there is the brake, ballot, brake bias fine adjustment. Okay, next we have the MGUK deploy mode right here, um, and as we talked about in the conditional text tool, that is being used here to drive the conditional text in that option. Uh, then we have various incident counts. Um, so right here, the incident count, uh, obviously, of you um, or the team. 
and then we have the joker laps remaining. So obviously if you're in a situation where you are in a race with joker laps uh, and there's a certain number that you have to do or that you're allowed to take, this uh, will display that information for you. Uh, and please note that some of these are sim specific. There are not all sims support all these options. Uh, and then finally we have push to pass, um, which is down here. And this tells you how many times you have used uh, push to pass uh, in your race. All right, so let's talk about some of the new warning features that have been added uh, in this version. So uh, the first one is that you can now have warnings which are animated. So previously when a warning happened, for example, this pit limiter one, uh, the pit limiter would be engaged and the warning would show up, that was it. Uh, you can now have them flash if you want to. So over here, uh, the flash speed can be any number you want, greater than zero. Uh, zero just means it's constantly on, uh, and, and the number higher is the number of milliseconds, so a thousand being one second. So let's say I set this to 500 because I want a five, uh, half a second flashing. Now when the pit limiter is engaged, this will flash every half second. And you can click this animate um, checkbox here to see what that looks like uh, and if it's what you're looking for. And obviously if you make this smaller, it gets fast flash. Um, and then you can uncheck that to stop that happening. So that is uh, something which can be used for any of the warning types. Uh, we also have some new uh, warnings that you can use in this version. Uh, there's the on joker lap. Uh, we also have push to pass engaged here. Uh, and there is the engine being stalled uh, is another one that can be used. So uh, let's talk about uh, the standings object in 2022.1. This has been uh, tweaked and some new features added to it. So here we have a basic uh, dashboard with just a simple standings object displayed. So the first thing is we can choose the header background color now. So if I want to choose a different color for that, I can do that and I can have a specific color for my header um, in the dashboard. So next, if we scroll down, uh, we have this option here of show your class only. So this, when enabled, will only display cars which are in whatever class you happen to be driving in in the sim. And then we also have this display no change as. So if I add another column here, so let's make it four columns and put this as something which is going to change. Uh, so let's say we're going to do the I rating and change. Um, and I'm also going to make it just on the right to so make it look better. So uh, if I change this from zero to say a dash, you'll notice here that where something doesn't change, it's now a dash. If I go back to zero, these are now zeros. So this allows you to customize what is displayed when uh, a change has not happened in a column which is displaying a change of a certain value. And finally, there are a couple of new options that can be displayed as columns. There's the car class and the class position, and also driver incidents and team incidents. Uh, so some of these are sim specific uh, and your sim may or may not support all these options. There are also various new options in the settings dialog for use within the Z1 designer. So these are in the general options. Uh, I'm just gonna go through them quickly because a lot of them just make it easier to, uh, to use the dash, the designer uh, and to um, know what's going on when you're working with things. So the first is reopen dashboard. Uh, whenever you have this selected, then whenever you reopen the designer, the dashboard you were previously working on will be opened at that point. Um, animations, uh, then if you check this, the animations are on by default when an object is created. Uh, we talked about that in the widget uh, section. Uh, save confirmation. This basically just after you save a uh, dashboard, it will give you a confirmation that it has been saved. So change dash confirmation. This basically uh, gives you uh, a window saying, are you sure you want to uh, change your dashboard? Because if you accidentally do it, that might not be what you want. So create preview when saving. Uh, in previous versions to create the dash preview, you had to click the button yourself. Now you don't necessarily have to do that. You still can, but also you can have it uh, created automatically when you save the dashboard if you want to do that. And finally, uh, guides. So as guides, you know, you can drag these things out and it makes it easier to uh, line items up. 
because you can line up the guides. Now you can choose to show those or not. So if I come here under edit, I can choose show guides um, and have them be hidden if I want to. So thanks for watching. I hope this has been a useful video. Uh, please like and subscribe to the video as YouTube requires you to. And don't forget to join our Discord channel. The link is in the description below and you can see all information there about the Z1 Designer, the Z1 Dashboard, and the Z1 Analyzer. It's a great community. We highly recommend that you join it. So we'll see you in the next video.